Hi Tanookies, I hope you're all well, you're all safe. Um, I've been talking to some of you over the phone the last few days, I'm calling around and I've been talking to your parents and I'm hearing great things about how well and hard working you're being. Well done, I'm so delighted. It's nice to know, you know, you're actually nice sometimes, even if you're not nice to me. Uh, only teasing. And we're going to continue on with our book, The Secret Seven, and we're on to chapter seven. So we just met the grumpy old caretaker. So he's just this grumpy old man. I mean, it'd be really hard for you to understand what it'd be like to have a grumpy man around you all the time. But yeah, there we go. Right, chapter seven, a talk with the caretaker. The three boys and Scamper had had an exciting time. They'd gone down the lane, noting the car tracks as they passed. They came to the old house. They saw that the gate was shut. They leaned over the top and saw the tracks going up the drive. There's my footprints I made yesterday morning, said Peter, pointing to them. And look, you can see Scamper's paw, tra- paw marks there, here and there. But our tracks are all overlaid with each other. Bigger footprints and other marks too, looking rather queer. A bit like prints that will be made by someone wearing great flat roundish slippers, said Jack, puzzled. Who would wear slippers like that? Look, you can see them again and again all over the place. Whoever wore them was prancing about a bit, probably being dragged in. The boy leaned. The boys leaned over the gate and considered all the marks, the marks carefully. They traced them with their eyes as far as they could see. Can any of you make out if the tracks go up at the front door steps, said Colin. I can't from here, but it rather looks to me as if the snow is smooth up the steps, not trampled at all. I can't make out from here, said Peter. Let's go up the drive. After all, we've got to interview the caretaker and find out if he heard anything last night. So we've got to go in. What shall we say if he asks us why we want to know, said Colin. I mean, he's a, it's, if he's in this mystery, whatever it is, he may well be frightfully angry if he thinks that any of us know anything about it. Yes, he might, said Peter. We've got, we'll have to think jolly clever over this. Let's think, they thought. I can't think of anything, except to sort of lead him on a bit. Ask him if he isn't afraid of burglars and things like that, said Peter at last. See if we can make him talk. All right, said Colin, but it seems a bit feeble. Let's go in. Scamper ran ahead down the drive. He disappeared around a corner. The boys followed the footprints carefully, noting how the slipper-like ones appeared everywhere, as if the owner had gone from side to side and hopped about like mad. They don't go up the front step, said Colin. I thought they didn't. Uh, they go round the side of the house. Look here, right past the side door where the caretaker came out yesterday, and down his path, round the kitchen door. Well, how queer, said P- Peter, puzzled. Peter puzzled, sorry to say. Um, why did everyone go prancing round to a kitchen door when there's a front door and a side door? Yes, all three tracks are here. Two sets of shoe prints and those funny round slipper prints too. It beats me. They, p- they tried the kitchen door, but it was locked. They peered in at the window. The kitchen was completely bare and empty, but they saw a gas stove, a sink piled with plates, and a pail nearby where they looked through the scullery window. Scullery is a bit like a pantry or somewhere you keep extra food. It's kind of like a back kitchen, essentially. We don't really have them that much anymore. They're kind of in older, bigger houses. I uh, wish I lived in a house with a scullery. That'd be nice. Um, I suppose the caretaker has the use of the scullery and the front room in that house, said Jack. Look out, here he is, said Peter suddenly. The old man was shuffling into the empty window, empty kitchen. He saw the three boys to, through the window and went to fling it open in a rage. If you want that dog of yours, he's round in the front garden, he shouted. You clear out. I won't have kids around here. You'll be breaking windows before I know where I am. No, we shan't, shouted Jack, determined to make the old deaf man hear. We'll just collect our dog and go. Sorry he came in here. Aren't you rather lonely here, shouted Colin. Are you, aren't you afraid of burglars? No, I'm not afraid, said the odd fellow, scornfully. I've got my big stick. There's, there's nothing, uh, and there's nothing to steal around here. Somebody's been round to the back door all the same, shouted Peter, seeing a chance to discuss this p- bit of mystery with the caretaker and see if he knew anything about it. He pointed to all the tracks leading to the back door. The old man leaned out of the window and looked at them. There'll be, no, there'll be no more than the tracks you've made yourself, tramping about where you've no business to be, he said angrily. They're not. I bet it was burglars or something last night, said Peter, and all three boys looked closely at the caretakers to see if his face changed in any way. Bah, he said. Trying to frighten me, are you, with your silly boy's nonsense? No, I'm not, said Peter. Didn't you hear anything at all last night? If burglars were trying to get in, wouldn't you hear them? I'm deaf, said the old man. I wouldn't hear nothing at all. But wait now. Yes, I think I did hear something last night. 
I'd forgotten it. Oh, that's queer, that is. The boys almost forgot to breathe in their excitement. What did you hear? said Jack, forgetting to shout. And the old man took no notice. He frowned and his wrinkled face became even more wrinkled. Seems like I heard some squealing or some such noise, he said slowly. I thought it was maybe some noise in my car- in my ears. I get noises often, you know. But I don't, did, didn't go to see if anything was up. But there now, nobody took nothing, nor, nor, nor did any damage. So what's the use of bothering? If people want to squeal, let them, I say. Who was the squeal? Was the squealing in the house, shouted Peter. Well, I guess I wouldn't hear any squealing outside, said the old man. I'm deaf as opposed to usually. And you're just making fun of me, you are. Trying to frighten an old man. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Can we come in and have a look around, shouted Colin. And the others looked eagerly at the caretaker. If only he would say yes. But he didn't, of course. What are you thinking of asking to come in, he cried. I know you kids, pestering creatures, wasting my time like this. You clear out and don't you come around here again with your tail tale of burglars and such. You keep away. Kids like you are always up to mischief. Just at that moment, Scamper came bounding up. He saw the old caretaker at the window and leapt up at him in a friendly manner. The man jumped in alarm. He thought Scamper was trying to snap at him. He leaned forward and aimed a blow at him through the window with his stick. Scamper dodged and barked. I'm going to teach that dog a lesson, cried the old fellow in a fury. Yes, and you too, standing out there cheeking me. I'll teach you to make fun of me, you and your dog. He disappeared. He's going to dart out of the side door, said Peter. Come on, we've learned all we want to go. No, we'll go. Right. Chapter 8 is another meeting. So, I think they're going to share what they found out. That's just what I think. Have a think about what you think is going to happen next in the book, and we'll see if you're right tomorrow. For now, have a lovely day. Hope you're enjoying the sunshine. If you're enjoying your walk, I know a lot of you are going out for your walks. If not, hope you're staying safe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.